Okay. So here are the rails. <laughs> and here is our show. Completely off. Completely gone today. What in the world? Derailed. <laughs> Yay, you're here. Welcome to the CK and GK podcast. Let's get going. Hi, we're here. Oh my gosh. Happy New Year again. Happy New Year again. So this is our first time recording since uh, the New Year, I think. I mean, yes. We've been giving you guys some school choice episodes. Right. And yeah. so um, yeah. we talked about the uh, problems with self-care, but I think we did that before <laughs> it became 2022. I think we did so too, but I think we released it right at the beginning of, tw- we don't even know. You guys, we, we know. have a list in front of us and we don't know. It's fine. Hashtag but, professional. Um, welcome to CK and GK. And today we are really excited because we are gearing up for the superb owl, which we will talk all about. If you have no idea what Jenny's talking about, she's talking about the Super Bowl. She's just moving letters around. She's putting the wrong emphasis on the wrong syllable. Well, you know that there's trademark issues and we can't say those words. Well, okay, fine. The big game at the end of the football <laughs> season. My bad. Please the don't big sue game. us. Whatever. All <laughs> right. So we're moms. We're also teachers. <laughs> Who pretend to adult on a regular basis. We know lots of things. But there's more we don't know. Our approach to teaching is all about fun and practicality. So come and laugh and learn with us. Yay. Um, I have with me the <laughs> Texas version. I'm so excited about this. Just laugh and pretend it's funny. I'm already it's laughing. Like- the Texas version of Fran Drescher. Stop it right now. Oh my God. Wait, wait. Here's my, here's mine. It's, I have it pulled up. I was going to call you the flashy girl from Flushing. No. Yes. <laughs> it's right here. It's on my notes. Oh, oh, my, oh my gosh. gosh. That's, That's amazing. amazing. Oh, you guys, wow. it's like one I... mind. <laughs> yeah. the so, and we Fran. get to share it. Sometimes I use it. Sometimes you do. I mean, it is what it is. <laughs> like, if you're sharing one mind, there's only so many brain cells we have between us, which oh, is why we goodness. do this show. That's oh so my good. gosh, I love it, guys. I'm Caitlin, and that's Jenny. Awesome. And here we go. So I'm gonna start. I'm just gonna open by offering up a correction. So at this point, it's like a month ago now that we released our MCU episode, right? It might even mm-hmm. be like six weeks, whatever. But our dear friend, Ariella, who is every girl's hype woman, you, everyone needs this woman on her team, um, has a correction for us. So she's, these are her words verbatim. She goes, oh, I caught an error. <laughs> At 2818, I say that there are rumors that Tom Holland and Matthew Garfield are coming back, but I meant to say Tommy McGuire. She's talking about the Spider-Man. Spider-Man. Yeah. and I remember that. that. Yeah. So she was talking about who was coming back, but she meant to say Toby Maguire and I've seen enough spoilers, but I'm not going to say anything. So I think Ariella knows her rumors and that was probably a verified rumor. So well done, but I'm making that correction for her. And then I have a couple of shout outs I have to make. We've got a few podcasts that I've been listening to just through various podcasting mediums. So the ones that are like kind of becoming Twitter besties with us are 88 miles per hour podcast. And they're called 88 miles per hour because they do throwback and 88 miles per hour is the speed at which the DeLorean must travel in order to go back in time. Right. The flux capacitor works at 88 miles per hour. Exactly. If my calculations are correct, when this baby hits 88 miles per hour, you're going to see some serious stuff. Stuff. I just edited it for like TBS right there. That was the TBS (laughs) edit. (laughs) Um, so yeah, 88 miles per hour podcast. They're really fun to listen to. I, I listened to their episode about the karate kid. That was really fun. And then another one that is becoming a good buddy of ours is that damn pod. So find that damn pod on Twitter, 
they're fun to listen to also. They did a, a collab with Designated Quizzers, and that was really fun to listen to. And I really enjoyed uh, Travel in Your Pocket podcast. That is two women from Belfast who talk about all of the places that they've gone to. And the episode I was listening to was one about their favorite cocktails in various locations around the world. Oh and it was really fun. fun. And I mean, you know, I love all things Ireland. So hearing these women speak was just like a joy in and of itself. And then hearing what they were talking about was so funny. And they were sampling these cocktails as they went through the night. So it just gets more and more fun to listen to. And when they, there has a, like a laughing session, that's easily like a minute and a half long and they left the whole thing in there. <laughs> it was so enjoyable. So those are our shout outs for today. I have one. Yeah. I didn't put it on the list, but I'm thinking of it now. Okay. Let's hear it. My shout out is to let me bore you to sleep. Ooh. Have I already told you about Sounds this? not exciting. Maybe. I, I feel like oh it sounds familiar, but tell me anyway. Yes. So this is a guy who does a boring podcast and he makes three versions of it. One that's just him talking, <laughs> one that's him talking with music for five hours. And the other one that's him talking with music for 10 hours. Recording for five hours. That would be exhausting. It's already tiring enough when we do it for like three. No, he has like a track that's like, be kind. To <laughs> Rest now. You do I not need to smoke. Love it. <laughs> yeah, I love it. It is. It is my. I wake up in the middle of the night. How am I going back to sleep? Oh, let me bore you to sleep. Jason Newland. Oh, perfect. Yeah, he's my man. Okay, that's awesome. He used to have a ferret named Andre. R. I. P. Um, oh and no! When he, when he lost his ferret, he did such a great tribute to it, and we even call this in my family the ferret. And so Abigail, <laughs> can you put on the ferret before I go to bed. And she wants to listen to Jason Newland. <laughs> that's amazing. Yeah. Oh my goodness. I can't. That's. Uh, I don't even know what like, it's about because I fall asleep within like the first time. Because minutes. you fall asleep. Yeah. There's nothing like those podcasts where you just like are really chill. Did you hear that uh, Nick Offerman has a voice that they're now using for the Calm app? <gasps> <laughs> yeah. That's. He was like, I guess I can bore people to sleep. And I'm like. I would listen I to your know. voice like going to sleep. Oh, I used to watch Parks and Rec as I went to bed every night. You might have misheard me. I didn't say a lot of bacon and eggs. <laughs> I want all the bacon and eggs you have. I know what I'm about, son. That's funny. God. <laughs> are, are you guys bored yet? Does this count as one of those put you to sleep podcasts? I don't think it does. So those are our shout outs for the week, but we've got obviously we'll have more and and give our our friends a chance the ones that you're um hearing about through us because they are definitely hyping us up too which is obviously very much appreciated i'm gonna go kind of light on the go sports corner i know you have something you want to share but i'm gonna say just for our listeners this is going to be a go sports light corner because our pretty much entire episode is about sports today so jenny's got a little something a little news it's not exactly news but that's okay because that's the tagline of our show there was a national championship game in ncaa college football yeah that's a big deal it doesn't even matter who won alabama lost right congrats <sighs> georgia yeah no bulldogs also i love that mascot so much you know i used to have an english bulldog so yes i do know that i i love a good bulldog and i want i want a bulldog and i want to name him frank that's a good name for a bulldog. I think so too. It also reminds me of Always Sunny <laughs> because of Frank, Danny DeVito's character. Amazing. My my English bulldog was a girl and I named her Ramsey after Chef Ramsey. Oh, I like that. Was she yeah. also a whiz in the kitchen? Oh my gosh, she put the F in food. Nice. <laughs> you came back with that really quickly. I was not prepared for that. So like I said, we're going to go real easy on the, the sports talk, but congratulations to Georgia. Well done. I mean, I pretty much would have cheered for anyone who beat Alabama. So well done. I do have a gem though. Do you have go a weekly it. gem? You oh, want me to go first? I always do. I Yeah, always you really, do. you really do always have one. So mine's just, uh, once again, my child just saying things that are hilarious. So we're at the age now, my child's five and a half. He is at the age where farts are funny, which God bless it. 
I was a middle school teacher for 13 years. Farts are funny, and I will die on that hill because it's just hysterical. So Sam, matter of fact, he's going to be so mad when he hears this, like, you know, 15 years down the road. It doesn't he's matter. He's going to be um, so mad when his friends hear it 15 years down the road. <laughs> Listen, my hope is that in eight years, he'll still think farts are as funny as he does right now because that's prime middle school age. But he goes mom um and he's like coloring or doing something like completely off the topic i let it out a cloud of gas and it was a fart and then just goes right back to what he was doing <laughs> and i was like um can you what i let it out a cloud of gas and it was a fart and then he just starts to keep like coloring away i'm like uh, uh right. all right cool man okay. yeah yes, and didn't did. laugh or anything and then farting is becoming a thing now so like couple nights ago reading stories and stuff he lets out like a grown man size fart and he thought he was hilarious and it was like all I could do was just bust up like I couldn't get back to the story we we're supposed to be having calming meditation deep breath time and that happened and it completely ruined any calm that there was I, I spent like an extra 15 minutes trying to get him to calm down after the grown man fart but farts are funny in our house now I was um, unfortunately right in front of Kit <laughs> when I ripped a giant one right in his face. <laughs> and then he put his mask on. <laughs> Stop! You like, made... Mommy might toot in my face again. <laughs> oh my god. That's amazing. And that's exactly what that mask is for. Well done. <laughs> yeah. It's like fumigation. Oh, man. That's like really good comedic timing. Well done, Kit. Yeah. No. <laughs> Both my cats have great timing. I looked at Abigail the other day and said, I need your opinion. She goes, oh, good. I have one. Oh. <laughs> Does she ever? I, I got I one of those. I, can her, I hadn't even asked her what it, uh, what the question was. I don't even remember what I needed her opinion about. But she was like, "Oh, good." I oh, perfect. <laughs> here's here's an array of opinions. Choose one for. <laughs> oh my gosh, talking about choose one. The other day, we are trying to decide who goes first in a game or something, and it's, "Hey Siri, give me a random number between one and a hundred. Oh, nice. That works. She said fifty. Oh. <laughs> Oops. I was like, thanks? <laughs> yes, it is technically random, and it is between 1 and 100, but come on, man. I mean, <laughs> right. But I wonder if Alexa would do better. Oh, of course. You think? Yeah? yeah? Okay. You can tell Alexa that you love her, and she will, like, break into this, like, Broadway-style song. Oh. Sam gets the biggest kick out of it. She's like, thanks for saying I love you. It's very funny. And you're like, uh, oh, okay. Didn't didn't know that was coming. Yeah, it's very funny. Um, the other fun thing you can make Siri do, in case you didn't know, you can make her turn on your flashlight and turn it off. Oh, with um Harry Potter words. Yeah. Why you look you got this contemptuous look on your face. First of all, Harry Potter is amazing. Second of all, it's very cool to do and it helps when you can't no, it like, is sometimes cool. I can't. I can't make my phone. I'm just not like a Harry Potter person. I'm not against it. I'm not against it. I'm just like not that into it. Like, I don't know what house I'm in or anything like that. Oh, I'm a Hufflepuff. Anyway. um, There you go. (laughs) (laughs) I used to know exactly what kind of wand I had too. And by used to, I mean like last year, I knew what kind of wand I had. (laughs) As a, shut up, as a 36 year old (laughs) woman. (laughs) I'm offended. <laughs> My That's sensibilities fine. are hurt right now. Listen, That's totally fine. Yeah, I'm not a proud. I'm I'm not a proud. I'm not ashamed. I am a Harry Potter a file. Is that a thing? Yeah, sure. Potterhead, whatever they're called. I'm not I clearly am not that much of one if I don't know what they're called. But either way, I do I did like that kind of stuff. I thought it was fun. You're it's not a fun. parrot head though, are you? No, I'm not a parrot head. No. Mm. I'm no. So do we have any current obsessions right now? Today oh, yeah. is Today Betty White's is birthday. Betty White's 100th birthday. Oh, rest in peace, you dear, sweet, beautiful angel who has a hobby of vodka. Oh, that's I love funny. you. That's, she said it was a hobby of hers. That's Amazing. hilarious. So in honor of her 100th birthday, there is a movement to give $5 to your favorite animal charity. 
Oh, I love that. Yeah. So last night we were talking about what $5 we were going to give. And I said, well, everyone in the family should be able to choose. And John says, yeah. oh, of course. Everyone gets their own $5. Yeah. He said, I'm giving to the koalas. Of course. This is his nickname. It's on the back of his softball jersey. Like he, he's koala. It is an interesting thing that he and Bryce have in common that they both are really Isn't into that interesting? Yeah. It's strange. It's strange. We, um, we call Kit Turtle. And Fox, those are like his nicknames. So we yeah, figured yeah. he would go with that. And he says, no, 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 I want to give to hedgehogs. We said, okay, okay, perfect. You can give to hedgehogs. Sure. Um, John says, of course you want to give to giant squid, Jen. And while I do love giant squid and they are my favorite animal, I said, no, I want to give to the bees. I am very, <gasps> very afraid of bees. You've heard me say oh, this on the show before. We've talked about this before on a pod. Yeah. But the bees are important. Yes. And I recognize how afraid I am. And maybe if I give them $5, they will leave me alone. Shout out to my friend, Amanda, who has bees at her house in Colorado and she has two hives and she messaged me the other day and I, I, I want to hang out at her house and have bees with her. Anyway, love you, Amanda. Shout out to the roofer who made fun of me for being afraid of his drone because I thought it was bees. <laughs> <laughs> and so we said to Abigail, Oh, what are you choosing? It's just, um, I want to go to the Cavalier King Charles. Okay. <laughs> King Charles Rescue. Sure. Have you, do you watch Best in Show like, ever? Um, the Cavalier King Charles Spaniel Rescue. How Sounds very great. Charlotte from SATC of her. Right. Have you ever watched Best in Show? Oh my gosh, I've seen all those movies. You know that I've seen those guys in concert. What? A Spinal Tap. Mm -hmm. A Spinal Tap. Okay, that's amazing. See, that's the that's the one I haven't seen. I haven't seen Spinal Tap, but I've seen what? all the other ones. And no, I know. But okay, best stop. in show. Stop, 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 stop. No, 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 no. I, I can't, can't believe you haven't seen Spinal Tap. I that's I the original. I know, but I know that I would get into it because I love Best in Show. It's one of my top five movies of all time. I can watch it anytime, Darren. We've had this discussion before, and I can't believe I lifted off the show, but we Love that. And the scene that I'm thinking of when you tell me that Abby wants to give to King Charles Spaniel rescue is the couple that has the Shih Tzus. And he's like, yes. what Shih Tzus walking around like, oh, alms for the poor. Yes. <laughs> because like, it's Michael McKean. Really, yeah, you're right. You don't usually see, you know, Cavalier King Charles Spaniels. No, no. I don't think they're in, <laughs> in trouble. <need. laughs> oh, but I love that. Can we back you're up for a second? Four -digit you, just, like, you just told me. Wrong. Hold on. <laughs> I'm very lost. You are such a science nerd. Your favorite animal is a giant squid. Oh, yeah. Absolutely. Okay. So you would really like the show that my son is watching. Sam is all about the deep right now. And he requested, as a reward for getting a bunch of stickers on his behavior chart, he requested a squid lovey. Now, to be clear, this is a stuffed squid with the tentacles Very and nice. everything, and it's blue and pink and amazing. He loves this thing, and I now need to send this to you, but whose yes. favorite animal is a giant squid? What? Um, <laughs> she owns it so confidently. They're unique. When you find one, everyone is very excited. Mm. Yeah. I have seen a giant squid in real life at the National Museum in New Zealand. Oh, that's cool. Yeah. Like, are we talking giant, not colossal, right? Like, not the ones that, like, fight sperm whales and take those things down. I mean, this one was, like, bigger than me. Yikes. That's terrifying. That's really scary. It's so I would cool. get into it if I were in a tank, like, and, and it was, like, around me and stuff, and, like, I, nothing was going to happen to me, but that's Oh, this one's preserved. It's oh, dead. it's like a dead. Oh, yeah. No, oh. I don't think they have a live one. Yeah, I'm into it though. I mean, I, I would. I'd love to see that kind of thing, but having it be the a eye is like the size of a basketball. Just, yeah, it's, it's kind of gross. A giant eyeball really. That that idea freaks me out. I can't. Anyway, blah. Um, I will say my obsession right now. I, I am going to jump on that train. By the way, of giving to animals, I am a bee person and I'm also a panda person. So I will find a way to make both of those things happen. Yeah, when you donate your $5 in honor of Betty White today, go ahead and put that in your review of our podcast. Yay! Sorry. You need reviews. Shameless anyway. plug. Yeah, there it is. 
I guess my obsessions are far more selfish than that, but I, for Christmas, gave myself some plant food spikes because I have these plants that are sitting on my windowsill and they were looking a little sad. They're doing okay, but they're looking a little sad. So my one in a blue vase is named Tina because Tina wears a blue shirt. And the other three that are like kind of similar, Huey, Dewey, and Louie. That's funny. Tina is looking good. She's really starting to to get lush and beautiful and green. So I'm very, she's my my best looking succulent. The other ones I'm a little nervous about. Huey looks okay. Dewey and Louie, not so much. So I got some work to do, but I've been like very excited about it. And I talk to them every night when I do the dishes. That's so nice of you. I know. They grow better when you talk to them. So there's that. I told you. I can kill any houseplant. <laughs> like, I, yeah, but I was that hydroponic garden. I do. There was one fill out a survey about yourself thing where they asked what's your secret, uh, what's your secret skill or hidden talent or whatever. Oh. I said, oh, I can kill anything, even a cactus. Nice. I overwatered. I think that's what happened is I overwatered and then. When I was transferring it to another pot, I think I messed it up somehow. So I think that's what happened to Huey, Dewey, and Louie. But I haven't transferred Tina because I'm afraid to. So I got to, you know, but she looks good. She looks really good. And then this one, I have to give a shout out to my friend Elizabeth. She posted this. I'm sure she found it somewhere and I don't know where she found it. And I wish I could give credit to the original author. But it was something about this is the year of not saving the good stuff until a special occasion. Right. Just something like, you know, I'm going to burn the good candles and I'm going to, you know, use the good lotion and the good mascara and and all that kind of stuff. Because I find that I've been doing that a lot lately, especially with COVID stuff and all that. It's been like, well, I'm not going anywhere, so I don't need to use the good mascara or, you know, I don't need to wear the nice sweater because I'm not going anywhere. And so I loved the idea of like, no, you have a nice candle, burn the nice candle. What special occasion are you waiting for? Stop doing that. Just enjoy it right now because those things are meant to be used and you're setting yourself up for being disappointed when you can't light it. So you might as well just go for it. You know what I mean? And I just, I love that. And I'm really trying to live my life by that right now because it's year three that we are in of COVID, right? 2020, 2021, we're in 2022. We can't, we can't keep this up. And so I'm just going to live my life by that. I'm not going to save it for later. I'm That's burning it. a volcano candle right now. Are you? And it smells so good. Nice. I need to, I'm not at my own house to record. I'm recording elsewhere. And so I'm not able to do that. But when I am working from home, that's my plan is to start doing those things, using the good oils in the, in the diffuser and lighting the good candles and stuff like that. And use the stickers. Yeah, I use, use the stickers. stickers. Right, you get all these stickers and you're like, oh, I'm out. I'm not going to use that now because it's not right. the right. No, no, put it on a piece of paper, stick it. Or in your planner, in your right, beautiful right. Candace Cameron Bure planner, put in the stickers. I'm using the stickers. <laughs> <laughs> I'm using mine too, actually. Making it look pretty. So that's our circle time. Yes? We yeah. good? Crisscross applesauce. Oh, okay. So... If you're someone who skips, now's the time to not skip and get to the good stuff. But we are today talking about the superb owl. We are preparing you for the big game. So if you are like me and you have a partner, a loved one in your life who is into football, even the slightest bit, there is a chance that you've had something yelled at the television around you and not understood what that means. Is that fair? Oh, yeah. Okay. So this is where Jenny's comment of, you know, you can always say move the chains or he was robbed or whatever kind of comes into play. <laughs> but <laughs> but as educators, Jenny and I feel like we have a duty to explain a few things. And, and I personally believe that one way that people feel excluded from a community is through a lack of knowledge of the vocabulary, right? Sure. Through language. Language defines a culture. Right. So of course. By giving you the words <laughs> and their meanings, you now have entrance into a community. And even if you don't want to be a part of that community, you can at least understand the language of that community. So that's really what I'm trying to do here is help you feel included in football land so that when your loved one is shouting things at the TV screen 
you can go, oh, okay, I get it. You don't have to care, <laughs> but you can at least understand. Absolutely. All right. So I've prepared a list of 550,000 words, guys. <laughs> Buckle up, guys. Here's the deal. I was like, oh, share me your vocab list. And I looked at it. I was like, <laughs> wait, what? No, it's not that long. But I will say this. Jenny's making a face. I'm thinking she's just telling me that she was impressed by my work. No, I was both impressed and embarrassed. And horrified. We're going to talk about the rules of the game on next week's episode. And I do not have that kind of notes at all. But here's the thing. What we wanted was for for when Jenny is going to go into the rules of the game and the objectives and how to understand what's happening, you won't understand what she's talking about unless we give you some some background knowledge, unless we give you some vocabulary to understand. So here it is. Football vocab, an introduction. I just did an arm waving, welcoming, like the more you know kind of star thing. So we're going to start with the basics, okay? The first thing that anyone ever taught to me about football was in football, you have four tries to move the ball 10 yards. I was like, oh, okay, I get it. Each one of those tries is called a down. There's your first vocabulary word, down. So the objective is to get a first down because that means that you've moved the ball 10 yards and then you get to try again. So if you hear first down, that's usually a good thing for the team that's pursuing those downs (laughs) and then we can get into what fourth down means but we'll probably do that later on in a different episode um you need to know what an end zone is an end zone is the 10 yard section on the field on either side players can score a touchdown when the ball crosses the goal line and the goal line is the line that separates the field from the end zone you might know this and you might not but there's kind of three little sections of a team For each football team, there's offense, which I'm not going to define because I hope that you know that. Defense, which I also am not going to define. But there is special teams, which is something that a lot of people don't know. And special teams is made up of the specialized players who are not necessarily on offense or defense. It's just another way of saying these are the people who are on the field during kicking times. Right. And you can be on either offense or defense and then also participate in special teams stuff. Correct. Especially with like receivers and stuff. You'll see that happening a lot. Uh, The line of scrimmage. And I'm going to pull a Sheldon Cooper here. The Sheldon Cooper line about Texas. He First of all, Sheldon Cooper says football is ubiquitous in Texas, which I love because it's true. That's why Sheldon knows football. Line of scrimmage is the imaginary transverse line separating the offense from the defense. That's the Sheldon Cooper description. But basically, it's where the ball is placed for the start of the next play. And the line of scrimmage changes Every time the ball changes position, so it could move forward or it could move backward, but it's always the line that separates the two sides of the teams, the two teams. It'll be like empty in the middle and you'll see like the ball when they are zooming in on the line of scrimmage. The chain gang, that's the folks who are moving the chains on the sidelines of the field and the chains are 10 yards long. There's a pole on either end and I ran the chains in high school I did um, chain gang like once or twice for a couple of freshman football games. Oh, so fun. that was pretty fun. Yeah. But you basically are responsible for indicating who has the ball and like how far they have to go. So the players can kind of look off to the side and go, okay, we have this far to go. It's a measuring tool. Yeah. It's just a measuring tool. It makes it easy. A snap is when, is when the center. So he's the center line guy who is right in front of the quarterback. The center gives the ball to the quarterback to start a play. That's a snap. Yeah, we're doing a lot of direct snapping right now Yes, yes. to where they are snapping the ball um, just to start the play, but it might go directly to a wide receiver or to a running back. So it doesn't always go straight to the quarterback, but the snap is when the center picks up the ball to start the play. Right. And then it's also something that happens when you're about to see a kick happen, you'll, right. you'll see a snap happen then too. There'll be like a, a long snapper who will toss the ball to the holder for the kicker to kick the ball. Turnover. This is when the ball accidentally changes possession. So one team has the ball, it'll get dropped or stripped from a person or intercepted, or there'll be an unsuccessful fourth down where they don't convert it into a first down. And so they lose the ball. 
I like the word accidentally there. It is accidental, right? Because if it's a change of possession, you'll know it's coming. There'll be a kick or something that lets you know, but it's it's like definitely it. accidental. A return is when a receiver catches the ball and runs it towards the opposing team's end zone to try and gain some yardage, potentially score. So you'll hear like kick return, punt return, something like that. And a fumble, and this one's pretty common, but it's when the ball gets dropped, but it's live and anyone can then pick it up and turn it into a play, either by scoring or just taking possession or whatever. So that's some basics. Jenny, how's it going so far? I'm just making notes as you're talking about how I want to structure the rules of the game using this language. So Hmm. it's very interesting pre-teaching the vocab. Yeah, uh, I found that it helped when I was teaching um, history and geography just to like, because then the kids would see the word and they'd be like, wait, what does that even mean? And then you have to stop, define the word because it's being used in context. And a lot of times context does help with the meaning, right? But it doesn't always help. And just being able to have some background on it was really helpful for my kids. So that's why I'm doing it now. And I'm calling you all my kids, even though there's a chance that we're all the same age. There you go. So a few notes about scoring. There are five ways that you can score in football. So you can get a touchdown and that's when the ball crosses into the end zone and that's worth six points. You can get an extra point, which is an opportunity for the team that made a touchdown to kick the ball in between the field goal posts. And that counts as one point and they kick it from the 15. If they don't make it, they don't get any points or They can either go for the extra point and get one, or they can go for what's called a two-point conversion. And that's when the team who scores the touchdown lines up at the two-yard line and they try to run it into the end zone again or pass it into the end zone again to try and get two points instead of one. Again, if they don't make it, they don't get any points. I always think of it as like a bonus touchdown. Yeah, that's exactly what it looks like. You're doing another play to try and get another touchdown. Right, that's exactly what it looks like. There's a field goal. This is kind of a contextual thing, but you'll usually see this when there's a team that's in like a fourth down position where they're like, "Uh, all right, you know, we're 45 yards back. We are clearly not going to make a touchdown. We're having a hard time with this, but let's go ahead and kick a field goal. And that's an opportunity for the kicker to come onto the field and try and again, kick between the ball between the field goal posts and they get three points for that. And then a safety. And this one, this is, a little confusing, but there's a position that's a safety and then there's a way to score called a safety. And so I'm not going to get into positions because that's probably more than anyone cares about, at least who listens to this show. But a safety is when you tackle your opponent who has the ball in their end zone. You get two points for that. That one's probably the most complicated one. And you'll see like a weird, it kind of looks like the, the hands in prayer emoji thing, but that's the signal for a safety. Those aren't very common, I would say. No. What do you think? No. You will see the other four in just about every game. Yeah, pretty much. But safeties are sporadic. Because safety is also not a strategy, right? No, it's accidental. This is a total accident that your team is doing so poorly that they are 100 yards away from their end zone and (laughs) then being tackled in it. (laughs) Ah. As someone who's a casual fan of football and watches like probably one or two games a week, and by watches, I mean they're on in the background and I'm kind of halfway paying attention, I can tell you that I haven't, I can't remember the last time I saw a safety. So there's that, if that helps. So there is some offensive terms and some defensive terms we got to get into here. So I'm going to start with offense. So We've all heard the word quarterback. I want to make sure I am clear on what that is. This is basically the director of the offense. He calls the plays. He starts the plays. He handles the snap. He will either hand the ball off to another player to run it and try and get those 10 yards and get a first down or get a touchdown, or he'll pass the ball to a receiver. Quarterbacks have to be able to run with the ball. They have to be able to pass accurately and basically have really good spatial awareness. It it takes a lot of skill to be a good quarterback. So that's a that's why they are the director of the team basically. The offensive line is the line of players who's in front of the quarterback. They are basically the blockers for the offense. 
So their job is either to pass block for the quarterback so that he can make a pass and have time to throw the ball or run block to make space for the player who is running the ball. Typically, you're going to see big dudes on the offensive line. If you see small dudes on the offensive line, you're watching a Packers game. Right. <laughs> Perfect. And we're Packer fans at my house, but I'll tell you, Aaron, Aaron Rodgers has nobody protecting him. Sometimes the offensive line is called the O-line. Yes, you will see that. The center is the, the center player on that line, and he's the one who snaps the ball to whomever is going to have it for that play. Wide receiver, pass catchers. That's their job. The pocket, basically the area where the QB kind of when they get the ball, they'll drop back into this little space. They'll you kind of retreat, take a few steps back. And you'll see that the offensive line will create a block so that the quarterback has like a little space that he can move around in. That little space he can move around in is called the pocket. This is his thinking spot. Yes. As the quarterback, you're going to make the decision of what's going to happen next once you have the ball. And so in the pocket, he is looking to see if there's anybody out there who could be a pass catcher, if there's anyone open who's ready to receive a, a, a pass, or does he want to go ahead and try and run the ball and make it to that first down line? Right. And when you hear the phrase, the pocket is collapsing or the pocket collapsed, it's because his O-line wasn't able to protect him. And so the defensive players are moving into his thinking space. Right. The other one that I wasn't necessarily going to include in here, but because I heard my husband shout it at the television, shout out to my husband who helped me with many of these definitions, is an audible, as in like the reading aloud company, right? An audible is when... The quarterback who has a headset inside his helmet and can communicate with the coaches will change. He'll probably see something at the line of scrimmage and go, we need to change the play right now. And an audible is when he changes the play at the line, even though the play has already been told to him in his head. So he'll change it just based on what he's seeing in front of him. And, and call an audible. So that's what I heard yesterday. It was call an audible. I, I didn't even say that correctly. And you might have used that phrasing in your family. Right. Right. You might have heard this because it is a kind of a colloquialism. I'm going to call an audible and we're going to order pizza. Right. Exactly. And what you're saying is I'm going to change the play at the last minute by saying out loud what we're going to do rather than sticking with what we had just huddled and discussed. Right. And to be clear, this is usually done in code. It's not something that they're like, okay, well, I'm going to pass it to Johnny and Johnny's going to run the ball behind me. And then we're, no, it's, it's very much like we're going to, you know, this is the blue 42 sort of situation, <laughs> right? Like that's what they're talking about. So that's some offensive terms that might help you as you navigate a discussion with a football person or just listen to someone scream at the television, some defensive terms. So we've got defensive line essentially the opposite of the offensive line. This is the front line of players for the defense. They're the big guys on the line. They've got their hands on the ground. Their job is to, to defend against run plays and to rush the passer, which, which what we mean is come at the person who is passing the ball, typically the quarterback. Part of the defense is the secondary. You're going to hear secondary all the time. And this is the back line of players on the defense. These are also known as defensive backs. These are like the fast little dudes who are playing defense. So on the defense, you're going to see big dudes at the front and then the defensive backs in the back and the, the defensive backs are going to be little because they're, they're fast and they're over there trying to defend um, against passes most of the time. A sack, another term you're going to hear all the time. This is when a quarterback is tackled behind the line of scrimmage because most likely his pocket collapsed. Right. <laughs> And this is very, very dangerous. Oh, it's dangerous. Explain. It is very dangerous because a sack is when the quarterback is tackled behind the line of scrimmage. Quarterback is tackled. It's a big deal. Right? This is not a player who, I mean, quarterbacks are big guys. Like they're football players, right? Let's be real. Right. But right. his job is not to block. 
his job is not to be the big, strong guy. It's to throw. Right. And so being sacked, if he doesn't expect it, a lot of quarterbacks are injured when they are tackled because they're not ready for it. This is why you'll also see a lot of quarterbacks when they are making a play, go ahead and slide Mm -hmm. and stop their run so that they're not tackled. Right. And we'll talk more about down being down by contact and all of those things in next week's episode. But when the quarterback is sacked, if it's not done well, he can be really hurt. Yeah, it's dangerous for him. It's also just bad in general because typically it'll happen when the quarterback has retreated from the line of scrimmage, which means it's a loss of yards. So if you're trying to get to first and 10 and then you, the quarterback is sacked on first down and 10 yards to go, which is what that means, then he could be in a new position where the line of scrimmage is now back, you know, three or four yards. So instead of having first and 10, you could now have second and 14. And as a math teacher, we know that adding to a debt is not good. We don't want to do that. No. So it just makes it harder for the offense to try and get those yards if your quarterback is sacked. Sorry to interrupt, but. No, that was a good interruption. So um, two other things I kept hearing in my football life this past season, um, pass rush. So a pass rush is the defenders coming after the quarterback. So you're talking usually about defensive linemen. A pass rush is the big dudes coming after your QB. And then the other one, this is probably the bane of my existence. Cause let me tell you, I have heard this word a thousand times and I still like can't recognize it on the screen. I know what it means, but I can't recognize it, but this is blitz. And you're going to hear your loved one shout out, stop that blitz or like whatever all the time. But this is anyone other than a defensive lineman attacking the quarterback. So typically like a linebacker or a defensive back attacking your quarterback is a blitz. Now, not saying that you're going to be able to recognize it on the screen, because again, been watching this for a long time and I still don't understand when it's happening. Like I can't really see it. But I know what it means. And now you do too. <laughs> well, also, shame on us if we... Oh. Dog? Yeah, the dog, dog. is the microphone. It's um, also, shame on us if we think that we're going to teach you how to see something on the screen by right, listening to I a description no of it. <laughs> that's like when my father-in-law will tell me, oh, well, can you tell that that's a curveball? And I'm like, no. What? No. no. Whatever. Especially not if you're listening to it on the radio. Right? <laughs> I'm almost done. But I got a few more things I got to share. A few more words. One of them is a kick or a punt. And this is a special teams word. This is when one team kicks the ball to the other team. A kick and a punt, they look the same, but they have different purposes. A punt usually happens on fourth down, right? I'm going to punt. We're going to order pizza. Just like calling an audible, it's a decision that you make because you're forced to. Right. A kick could be a kickoff, like you're starting a quarter or not a quarter, you're starting a half, or it could be like you making a field goal kick. So those are intentional and planned. Whereas a punt is like, well, now we have to punt, right? They're different, but they still both require special teams to come out onto the field. Onside kick is when the kicking team kicks the ball, just kind of a short distance to try and regain possession of it. So typically when you're kicking, you're kicking it off to the other team. If you're, if you're doing an onside kick, then you're trying to keep it for yourself. On your side. On your side, right. A squib, which I don't usually hear this word. Jenny's giving me the face like, what is that? A squib is like when the ball gets all like squiggly and weird, (laughs) like because it's a football, when you kick it, they don't bounce normal. So it's like all wobbly and bouncy and stuff. I've never heard this word. Yeah. Yeah. But it's, it's done on purpose. Like you'll see it and you'll go, Oh, that was a mistake. No, it probably wasn't a mistake. They did it on purpose. They're just trying to burn through the clock. Typically when that happens, two other words, a fair catch. A fair catch is when the receiver who's trying to catch the kicked ball will literally wave his hands in the air. A lot of times you might see one hand go up and around, like over the shoulder sort of thing. Kind of a backstroking type motion. Yeah, it looks like a backstroke. Or you might see like both hands kind of go up and like do sort of a weird wave where they make an X and then come back out. But you usually will see, I see the one hand more often than anything else. But what they're doing is they're saying, hey, I'm not going to run once I get the ball. Don't tackle me. 
Yeah. That's a fair catch. I see where this ball is going to land. I know I can catch it. Right. I am going to catch this ball and that is going to be the end of this play. Right. And I'm going to stay right where I'm standing and I promise I will not advance the ball. You can't, the, you can't signal a fair catch and then run. Like you're not allowed to do that. So a lot of times they'll do that if they're trying to avoid a fumble maybe. Mm-hmm. Um, and the last one in special teams language is a touchback. A touchback is when the kickoff or the punt goes into the end zone and the team that's receiving the ball doesn't run it out of the end zone. If you get a touchback, then that means that you get to, the ball's in the end zone and that you get to start the new line of scrimmage is on your own 20 yard line. So it's kind of a guaranteed position to start your, what's called a drive for your first and 10, your first try to get 10 yards. Right, right, right. Okay. And now for the penalties. And then, and then you don't have to listen to football speak for the rest of the week (laughs) if you don't want to. So pass interference is the first penalty I have to address. And it's kind of an obvious one. So I was sort of thinking like, do I really address this? Except that pass interference to me usually just looks like good defense. So I would not be a good football rep, but it's when a player makes some sort of illegal contact with another player who's trying to make a catch. According to NFL rules, a pass interference could include holding, pulling, tripping. That's kind of obvious. Putting hands in your face or cutting in front of a eligible receiver. Receiver. That's the word. There are some exceptions like you if it's if it looks like it's an accident like they bump into someone or they trip and fall or they jump up together and that's when like a hit happens or whatever that typically doesn't count but it can be subjective which is one of the reasons that people get angry about pass interference calls. The other thing is sometimes the uh, officials are looking at in which direction the offending player what's looking Mm -hmm. true because pass interference might look different if you're watching for the pass and then you just bumped into someone right versus you are looking at the catcher and then grabbed them by putting your hands up (laughs) right right and putting your hands up right those are you know they're different things and and all that so intention a lot of times is considered not always right absolutely but intention a lot of times is and that's why it can be subjective right because you could see it from a different angle than oh the whole game is subjective let's be real uh that's fair ask the cowboys or maybe the patriots when they had tom brady Hmm. i'm just saying i will say in terms of pass interference you can have a pass interference call on either the offense or the defense this is correct this is correct. It is possible to be an offensive player trying to catch the ball and still get a pass interference called on you. Holding another subjective penalty. This is when you are restraining a player who does not have the ball. Offensive holding and defensive holding are two different things. Offensive holding is when you are grabbing or pulling or holding a defensive player down intending to open up some sort of route for the ball to travel. Defensive holding usually happens when a defensive player is holding a receiver in an attempt to prevent them from being open. It's like a bad block. Basically you're, Mm -hmm. you're, you're holding their physically actually holding their body and you definitely cannot grab a face mask. So you'll hear face mask calls. That's like a big, big no, no. You also may not grab them by their shoulder pads That's called horse collar. Yes, because you can hook your hand into their shoulder pads and rip them down. The NFL has made some effort to try and make some of these calls more inclusive so that more things can be called in an effort to protect the player's safety. Like that's really what they're kind of going for here. If you grab someone by the face mask, you can rip them down with so much force. You can really hurt them. Same thing with horse collar, et cetera. But In this situation, offensive holding is more common. It is typically a 10-yard penalty, so it's a bad penalty. It can completely derail your strategy in that moment because you can go from first and 10, get a holding call, to now you're second and 20. Right. And it's a big deal to get that call. False start. False start is when an offensive player moves after he's taken a set position. When you're on the line of scrimmage, if you're an offensive player, once your hand is down – You cannot move 
this could be something as little as you shuffled your feet. Your hand is down in front of you and your feet took a tiny little like one inch move that can count as a false start. So that's kind of a big deal. And it's a five yard penalty like every time. So again, you could go from first and 10 to first and 15 in a heartbeat. So it's just, it's a really undisciplined thing that you'll see happening. On the other side of that, you'll see an offside penalty. So if a false start is when the offense moves, an offside penalty is when the defense moves. But defensive offside is a lot harder to have that happen because you can be a defensive player like on the D line and kind of make a jump, but you can return to your spot and not get called for false start. But it usually happens with like a a defensive back doing some sort of movement that he's not supposed to do if I'm not mistaken. So there you go. And my last one, ready for this one? Easy one. Illegal formation. Illegal formation is typically when there's not enough players who are lined up on the line of scrimmage. You know, I think there's supposed to be like seven guys on the line or something like that. And so you might have the wrong number of guys on the line, right? either too many or too few. Also a a really easy, like undisciplined one. That one shouldn't be happening very often at the professional level. And it gets called a lot of times if we're exchanging players on the field. Right. Substituting. Right. And they're not thinking about what substitution is being made. Not aware of the clock that will happen to... Yeah. More often than not, this is not because the team doesn't know where they're supposed to stand. It's because they don't know how many people are on the field and what's going on. Right. Right. It's like a lack of awareness sort of thing. I feel like there might be one more, but I can't think of what it would be. Delay of game. If you are the offensive team and you don't start your play within the amount of time that you have to start, then that's a penalty as well. And sometimes that's a strategy to kind of throw off the other team. Yeah. Or just eat up clock time, which we'll talk about next week. Yeah. I think that's all that I have. And I'm just trying to make sure, again, the goal of this was to give you some some background information so that when Jenny starts explaining all of the rules of football for the Super Bowl, you can kind of have an understanding of what's happening. Uh, Even if you're not paying attention, you can hear a few words and understand why the person that is in the room with you and watching this particular football game, what they're actually saying and and all that. So that was our goal here. Are we good? No, I think we're great. And we're up for another week of football. And, you know, I keep thinking back earlier in this first season, we said, you know, we'll, we'll go over the rules of all of these sports. So I'm kind of excited that we are. Yeah, that we're actually doing. <laughs> we, I mean, yeah, we, we've been talking about them and, and we might as well give you guys some of that information that we promised. So here it is. I do want to just really quickly, again, put a call to action here. If you haven't rated us, please do so. It helps us out so much. Actually, Jenny and I just got news yesterday that we hit Good Pod's top 100 list, top 100 shows for the first time. And if you are someone who listens to podcasts outside of Good Pods. Good Pods is kind of like a big podcasting community sort of place, but people like Katie Couric have endorsed Good Pods and stuff like that. So us hitting the charts, we hit 68 in the top 100 shows for the first time yesterday. We were newcomers to that list. So thank you to all of the people who are listening and rating us. But if you haven't given us a rating, it helps so much. Please do so. So we appreciate that. And, uh, Yeah, there's been a call for merchandise, but we can't give merchandise until people start rating us. Yeah, (laughs) I'm so excited about that. Yeah, it's really cool. I'm super excited about merch. So rate us, review us, and uh, we'll have some merch. That would be amazing. Can you imagine my face on a sweatshirt? We're not doing it that way. We got to figure out some other way (laughs) to do merch. Yikes. I mean, maybe it should just be like... It's going to be logos. Oh, yeah, of course it is. My brother had this buddy, though, in college that had t-shirts made with his face and it just said I met Mike nice and like when he would meet people he'd be like here you want to I met Mike t-shirt and so you could wear it and be like yeah I met this dude and he gave me a shirt so I get it that's so funny so we actually did that um we I was not old enough to do this my when my grandfather turned 60 
we had a 60th birthday party and I was little when this happened, but I remember distinctly getting a John is 60 today t-shirt with like a picture of him as a kid. And then I think my sister must have told her friends about it because when my sister turned 21, they did the same thing. They found a picture of her and it was like, Kara's 21 <laughs> and she had a, I, I love that t-shirt. It's like her with all of her, like a ski hat and goggles on. And she's just like kind of looking real cool, like just sort of staring off at something. And it's, yeah, everybody wore Kara is 21 t-shirts. They're amazing, but it was, it's her actual face. That's so funny. We're not doing that. Well, I have someone banging at the door. Oh, so we have to wrap it up. I need to wrap it up. So make good choices. And use your gift cards. Bye. Bye. Hey friends, thanks for listening to the CK and GK podcast. Find us at CK and GK podcast on Instagram and Twitter and rate review and subscribe on Apple podcasts, Spotify, good pods, or anywhere else that you pod. See you next time.